Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today we're going to be looking at a pair of broom handles that have definitely seen some better days, but have been through some pretty interesting experiences. And uh, both of these guns came back from China. Uh, China was a large consumer of uh, Mauser products and especially broom handles from the 1920s into the 1930s, uh, well before World War II. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of Chinese warlords actually produced their own copies of the broom handle. So you'll see things like there was an arsenal called the Taku Naval Dockyard made a copy of the broom handle, a very actually high quality copy. And those are floating around. You'll see, um, uh, I believe they're Shansai 45 caliber and they're in uh, sort of a larger version of the broom handle, but in 45 ACP and you'll see those on the American collector market. And you'll also see a fair amount of these fairly beat up, but uh, pretty historic broom handles that actually came back from China in the 1990s and early 2000s before importation was curtailed for various political reasons we really don't need to get into. But uh, as you can see, this first gun is a 1930 commercial, and you can tell that by the uh, large serrated grips here. Uh, this gun has been refinished at some point by a Chinese arsenal, so it's got a typical Chinese rework finish on it, which is sort of a flat black. Um, you can still see the markings nicely. Uh, it's it's well done. It's you know the when the Chinese actually redid their guns on a professional level, they did a very good job doing it. Um, this gun functions perfectly well. It fires nicely. Uh, it actually has a stamp here, which I believe was actually put on by Mauser, that says in Chinese characters, it says made in Germany. And you'll see uh, a fair amount of different markings on Chinese guns. Uh, I've seen some that actually were marked for the Shanghai police. That was a known contract and um, just various different ones. But this is sort of a typical example. You've got all your standard Mauser uh, markings, your standard serial number in the 800,000 serial number range. Uh, you've got your stepped barrel of the 1930 commercials. And the 800,000 serial number range sort of puts this at the earlier part of uh, 1930 commercial production. This is a full on all the features of the 1930 commercial. And we'll look at the safety on this gun uh, a little bit closer. Uh, one other way you can definitely tell this is a reblued gun is this rear sight has been refinished as well. Uh, these were always in the white and this one definitely is not. Um, everything else is obviously, you know, the hammer that would be in the white is not. Uh, your bolt in the white is not. Um, but otherwise, it's it's a very interesting gun and in that it has been through quite a bit. It went to China in the 1930s, uh, fought in various wars, probably even fought in the Chinese Civil War, which was going on. And then obviously in 1949, Mao Zedong was victorious. Uh, and then it was arsenaled in China and then came over to the United States in the 1990s, early 2000s, maybe even late 80s. It is going to be import marked and these are going to be very hard to see. But if you look under the barrel on these, usually you'll see an import mark. You might see something like Federal Ordnance. This one is a CAI, I believe. Yeah, no, this one's actually KFS. They were another importer of, of broom handles at that time. Uh, you'll see CAI for Century Arms International. You'll see a lot of them and usually marked under the barrel in pretty small letters, so pretty hard to see. So it's not like they put a giant billboard like they'd have to now. Uh, these also had the Mauser banner commercial logo on the side. Now the safety on the 1930 commercial, and we'll touch on this in other videos on 1930 commercials, was a little bit different. They had moved away from the NS safety on these guns. So you can actually down is going to be fire and obviously cock your gun. You can now put your gun on safe one handed and take it off 
to fire one-handed. So it was a little more of a, um, just sort of a more handy safety. So you, the other thing you could do is actually put your gun on safe. And then, I don't know that I would necessarily do this, but this was a feature you could do. You could pull the trigger and drop the hammer. And theoretically, it stops that hammer right before the firing pin. And then if you go into fire, obviously you can see your firing pin move up, put it on safe, moves your hammer back. Um, probably not the way that I would uh, decock one of these broom handles. I don't know that that's a really safe way to do it, but uh, that was the feature of the 1930 commercial. Our other gun here is a extremely well used Chinese version. And this is a little bit earlier. This one's gonna be in the 740,000 serial number range. This does not have the 1930 commercial safety. This is actually still an NS or a new safety. So the difference being with these, you could put it on fire one-handed, <clears throat> excuse me, cock your gun, you could not then apply the safety one-handed. You actually would have to cock this back and then apply your safety. So uh, just a little bit harder to put your gun on, on safe. I'm not really sure why Mauser did that, but they did. This one obviously uh, from the serial number range would have been a black uh, salt blued gun. So with a really gorgeous black finish when it was new. And uh, we've done some videos on those salt black guns. Um, this one obviously has all the typical markings that you would expect. Um, your Crown U, your Mauser chamber. The really interesting thing about this one is it is actually an all matched gun, still even after all these years and all this abuse. And I really don't think it ever got refinished. So it's just lost all its finish, but it's got really nice fire blue still on the extractor here which is which is pretty unusual for a gun that has seen so much service and lost so much blue um, and it's also interesting that it's still a matched gun most of these uh, were taken apart and then put back together you know god knows how many times so most chinese guns are sort of a a mis mismatch of parts this one is actually so loose that you can hear how much it rattles when you do that the amazing thing is it still fires and it still functions just fine. I don't know that I would fire it very much, but it certainly does still work, even with all the rattles and, and everything. So it just kind of shows you that even a well-used broom handle can still be a, a shooter. You know, obviously get your gun checked out by a competent gunsmith before you go shooting it. But uh, this gun, for all its use, is still ticking. So uh, I just thought I'd show you a couple of uh, typical Chinese guns that saw service and then came back to the United States uh, real quick. We'll also look here. This one is going to be really hard to see because they've actually pretty much worn off. But there were import marks along the barrel here. And they were so shallowly put on that they've really just kind of disappeared. You can feel them still when you run your finger over them. But that's really it. Um, so that's just something to be cognizant of, uh, guns that don't seem like they've got import marks may actually, but almost always you'll find them underneath that barrel there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. We'll be looking at, uh, helmets, broom handles, all kinds of guns, all kinds of interesting military. Thanks for watching.